to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Jacob laid down pastor in a place called Luz, and the Bible says that while he slept, he had a dream and he saw a ladder that connected the earth to the heavens. Are we together? Are we Bible students? And angels were ascending and descending. At the top of it was God himself. And he began to speak to him. When he was done from that vision, he got up and said, Ah, surely the Lord was in this place and I knew not. He says, This is the house of God, the gate of heaven. He anointed the place. And because he was not sensitive, he was not prepared for the things that God had for him to do. The next scene in his life was Laban's house. He went through over 20 years of pain, disappointment, betrayal. When that happened, when we get to Genesis 32, I'm rushing for the sake of time. So we can focus on that coming move of God. I'm just trying to give us a preamble. When we get to Genesis 32, the Spirit of God is ready to try again with Jacob. But there was a price. He had to push all his wives away. Push all his cattle away. The Bible says when he was alone. There is a realm in God where you don't go as us. It is he. There is a realm in God where you don't go as husband and wife. There is a realm where you don't go as pastor, apostle, prophet. There is a realm where you don't go as preacher, musician. Uh -uh. When he was alone, the Bible says, a man came and the wrestle began. And he said, leave me for the day breaketh. Jacob said, no, I missed it before. I know the consequence of living life and advocating a destiny without your presence. I will not let you go till you bless me. He said, what is your name? He said, Jacob. He said, thou shalt no longer be called Jacob for as a prince. You have had power with God and you have prevailed. And the Bible says he touched the hollow of his tie. This is a mystery. That means I become your completion. I have done something to you that you can never find balance without me. I have become a factor, a completer in your life. And then he blessed him. And the Bible says that he called the place Peniel and the sun arose. I have seen God face to face and my life is preserved. Enoch. There is so much busyness in our world. Now, respectfully speaking, conferences, conventions, church building, projects, even though they look like Christian activities, we do not know to what degree they are distracting us from aligning to this great move of God that is coming. Can I tell you this? If a major part of your life is seen and known by people, you are not truly walking with God. A major part of your life must remain behind the veil. Preaching is, should be a minute fraction of what your life is about. The pandemic forced us because there were no programs, you didn't, you couldn't go out. Many people, including believers, became restless because they've not mastered the art of the secret, the art of the presence. It was such a burden to live without going out, without doing this, because we are used to the ritual and the religion of activities. When you study through scripture, Jesus camped with these people. They spend time with him. Remember my teaching yesterday. Our call is not unto ministry. In its purest form. Our call is unto Jesus. Follow me. Not follow an ambition. I know you will become an apostle one day. But for now. The assignment is follow me. When you follow me. There is a making. When I make you. 
I send you. The empowerment comes when I send you, not when I'm making you. Are we together? Enoch. Enoch is the spirit of intimacy, hunger, genuine holiness and passion, consecration, a pursuit for spiritual things. The average man of God, because of the pressure that society, I, I may not blame it sincerely on ministers, but the pressure that society brings to have to make full proof of your ministry puts pressure on us and we would rather that our spiritual lives die and let the church move forward. Are we together now? The Bible talks about the first miracle of Jesus. There was a message there. The wedding in Cana, Cana of Galilee. The Bible says there was a feast. And in that feast, Jesus was there, but he was not honored. He was there. Churches were being built, but Jesus was no longer the center. Many things were happening, but Jesus was no longer the center. There were rulers, and the Bible makes a very dangerous statement, and the wine finished. Yet, activities were still happening, but the wine had finished. It took a few people to discern that something is wrong with the formation of this feast. And then, Mary, who was representing the ministry of the Holy Spirit, led them to Jesus. And Jesus said, go and do your thing. Do your ministry the way you are doing. They said, no, we are not confused. In the midst of this feast, even though you are not honored, we know. And he said, okay, if you have recognized me, this will be the formula. Start with water. It has to be water before wine. Leave wine. Use this jar, six, the number of man. Fill it with water. There needs to be that purification. Are we together now? That once you get that water, whilst you are going with water, out of that water, it will start turning to wine. If it is God, it starts with water before it becomes wine. Are we blessed? The pandemic gave me an opportunity to seek the Lord and to press him for him with all my heart like never before. It was such a luxury. I did not realize how busy my life was. Now I say this with all humility. It's an honor to serve the body, but careful. We are not Jesus Christ. We are only advocating him. It was not your face that was on that crucifix. So you have to be careful. Be to serve the body and do all of these things is amazing. How many times we forget and we ignore the reality of the secret place. And you know what? While you are dying, people still keep clapping. Apostle Joshua Selman, be careful. Men can clap you to a point where you lose out on the program of God. That God used you yesterday does not guarantee he will use you tomorrow. There are standards all the time. Our fathers have taught us just because you were used yesterday does not guarantee that you'll be used tomorrow. I've cried unto God so many times. I said I would give up ministry a thousand times, Pastor Daly, and I mean it from my heart. I'm not just preaching. Oh, away with ministry. I will shut it down a thousand times to preserve his presence. That's where he started with us. From beginning to the end, it will always be, it's always been you, Jesus. Not preaching, oh Jesus, nothing else matters. Nothing in this world will do. Ah, that's the spirit of Enoch, hunger for encounters. That Jesus, you're the center. And everything revolves around you, Jesus. From my heart to the heavens, Jesus be the center. It's all about you. Can I tell you this? This is always the formula 
the church history in Nigeria, most of those who were used by God did not want to be used. They were just people who just, there was a hunger and a go to the forest. They were not looking for anything. Lord, more of you, more of your glory. That's all I want. There are several levels of the will of God. There is the predeterminate counsel of God. But there is a way a man can push himself into the current will of God through the sacrifice of alignment. Meaning the script of your destiny did not capture that role. But you so align, you are so available, God cannot deny your presence. An example was Elisha. Elisha was never supposed to be a prophet. The next prophet was to come among the sons of the prophet. But he aligned himself. He sold everything. There's something that hunger and sacrifice God does to God. Genuine pursuit. There is nobody who is immune to the temptation of a mundane life. Shut your eyes. Shut your phone, shut everything and say, Lord, this is about you. I've prayed and cried many times to God that anything that sustains the ability to take your place in my life, I'm praying it in advance. May it never come to my life, number one. And number two, may it never be able to take your place in my life. The coming move of God is not, an, it's not a manifestation of celebrities. No, celebrity Christianity is going to die a permanent death in the name of Jesus Christ. Yes. John said, when the disciples of John came and said, someone just came to town. And he's outshining you. John, are you not aware? Won't you fight for your right? John said, he's correct. I must decrease. Mm. I must decrease. The more people see you, forgetting about you while they are looking at you, the proof you are yielded. The more they see you, they should see him in you. That's If they keep remembering, is a proof that you are alive in the flesh. Are we together? It's been my advocacy. I never started out. I, I will never it will hire me to share this. That when I start. There are many things I never knew they used to give if already or more in ministry that you actually preach and people bless you. I will almost run away. Will I be able to sleep? It was a derivative of a genuine passion genuine passion I have studied the history of revivals a bit by the great and tell you most people who God really called they ran away they didn't want the stage they wanted him they wanted him they, they hungered and they sought his face so much and he found in them vessels, vessels of power, vessels of grace. So the sequence is not Rema. The sequence is not revelation. The sequence is not gifts and celebrities. The sequence is first a retreat. We will advance by retreating. We will have to go back and say, Lord, this is about you now. I'm speaking to men and women of God. I'm speaking to people want, who want to be featured in the program of God. Believe me, the appetite for a celebrity man of God will only land us in destruction. We must go back and know how to hold the four horns of the altar. The Lord, if my life will be like Anna the prophetess and no one will see me, so be it. Provided you are glorified in and through my life. Are we together now? Please take it higher for me. There's a song that
captures, I, I write a lot of songs, I, be, I, I receive a lot of songs that have to do with intimacy and hunger and passion. Not because I'm a man of God, because I have found out in scripture that every time God wants to use men, his first assignment is to call them to himself. Please don't forget this. Moses, you cannot go to Pharaoh the way you are. Your first call is to the burning bush. Interact with his majesty first. Leave Pharaoh behind. I will send you. Moses was so wise. He said, go to Pharaoh. Moses said, who shall I tell Pharaoh had sent me? I cannot advocate over an, a God I do not know. Pharaoh will ask me questions. Who sent you? This is the question that most people have not been able to answer. We fail to answer it in mission fields. We fail to answer it through church projects. Because whoever sent you is the one who backs you. Who sent you? Can you take it high? My voice, forgive me. <sighs> you have my everything. You've heard that song? You have my everything. We were in a meeting many years ago, and it was it was a meeting that was just drawing out every flesh to just die. To say, Lord, this is not... I, I think those kinds of meetings must be revived in the body of Christ. It's not just that you invite someone and come and sit down and hear someone lead you. And No, there are times where we just come and lie before his majesty. We cast our crowns, no matter what the achievement is. Roll from pillar to post and cry before him and say, Lord, search my heart. Try my thoughts. If there be any wicked way in me, lead me to the way everlasting. It is that state of brokenness and contriteness of heart. He says a broken spirit. Thou, O God, will not despise. Take all of me, all of me. Oh, take all of me, all of me, Lord. You have my everything. Use all of me, all of me, Lord. Anoint my everything, use my everything, I give my everything, you have my everything, say, take all of me, all of me, Lord. The Bible says, I beseech thee, brethren, Apostle Paul is teaching now. By the message of God, Romans chapter 12 and verse 1, I beseech ye, brethren, by the message of God, that ye offer your bodies, not just your spirits, your bodies, as a living sacrifice, he says, holy and acceptable. He calls it your reasonable act of worship. In fact, the Bible says to offer unto him the calves of our lips. Genuine surrender. To get saved, you don't need to give your life to Jesus. You need to receive his life. But to be used, withhold it. Many of them are around. Different prayer groups scattered across this nation. Men and women. Some of them do not feel qualified in themselves. Some of them do not even know that those groups were the birthing of the Spirit. Oh, it may not be the Joshua Selmans, I assure you. There are many others. Elijah, you are not the only one. There are 7,000 others under the custody of Obadiah who have not yet bowed to Baal. The spirit of Enoch, the grace for communion. It says the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the fellowship, the koinonia, the participation of the spirit. Let it tabernacle be with you.
we must return the pattern that hosts God in the beginning God it is a non-negotiable formula not in the beginning ministry not in the beginning tongues not in the beginning power not in the beginning fasting not in the beginning prayer they are wonderful but the sequence of our pursuit must be God not even kingdom God good things can still kill if God is not above them God can give you something that will fight him he must be exalted and enthroned Lord of all are we still together please pay attention to this Pastor Dele, this is the reason why so many people fall in the wayside. Because whatever motivated you into ministry is what will sustain you whilst you are there. If you want a career, some of you are crying, don't be ashamed of your tears. It was never about money. It was never about the mic. It was never about membership. Dear Lord, it was about your presence my hunger I thank God for the blessings and the privilege of an encounter with Jesus but if I never met him I will still be grateful in life and in death this is the spirit that will bring back Christ we need to respectfully go back to edit a lot of things we are doing in the body of Christ it is the reason why we do not see his power Gideon cried and said why do we not see these powers again there has to be a restoration of genuine intimacy with God. Gone are the days where people can shut their doors and you call them, they say, I'm having time with God. Right now, when you call someone and say, I'm having time, he said, you want to die of hunger? Whoever told us the presence of God brings men down. Whoever told us this is the reason why there are certain things we don't hear again. January is a very strategic time in the body of Christ. We have people fasting and many times fasting religiously just for 10 days, 30 days or whatever and we finish and we don't know to what end. Most of the fast, respectfully speaking, is just need driven. I was told if I fast, I can get a job. Wonderful, but it's more than that. For they don't know what you mean to me. They don't know what you mean to me. You are the reason I leave. You're the one for me. You're the one for me. You are the reason I leave. You're the one for me. Come and make my heart your home. Come and be everything I am and all. Search me through and through my heart becomes a man live for 365 years and all that the Bible says about that man is an inward yet he wrote a book and the Bible does not even talk about the book he wrote and dwell so much in it a testament seventh man from creation who taught him the value of God's presence 
listen to me truly speaking I pray I pray for us in the studio and for as many who are following for someone this is a message as to why things may not be working around your life and ministry because your focus is on your ego you think it's on the ministry but it's on your reputation it's an attempt to show this thing is working till my heart becomes a home be magnified Oh Lord You are highly exalted And there is nothing You can't do Oh Lord My eyes are on you Vet this testimony with my life that if Christ tarries at the end of my life let it not be how many people were healed thank God for all of those things not how many houses you bought not how many cars you bought MOG not how many conferences you attended the testimony of Enoch and Joshua Selman walked with God it's a testimony that our mundane pursuit will not give us the wisdom to see, to discern, and to appreciate. It is the noblest testimony that can be given for any man. Walked with God. If your presence will not go with me, do not send me. What am I doing? If your presence will not go with me, let the conference end. I'm not too embarrassed to stop it. If your, if your presence will not go with me, if my passion for you will suffer because of ministry, let the ministry go away. Do you have the courage to drive every other thing in your life? Abraham, take now thy son whom thou lovest and offer him. This is the price to host God. Everything that represents your value and worth must die at that altar. The price for life is death. Only dead men can carry God. Only dead men will be able to advance the frontiers of the kingdom in this end time. Am I boring you? This is very serious. Our fathers in this nation, many of them who spearheaded the revival, they were not very educated. But my goodness, they had hunger. How did the prayer camp start that we now build? Those prayer camps were not built out of ambition. They were built out of a desire to have a place. To worship you, I live. To worship you, I live. I live to worship you. They wanted a, a place away from every noise. To worship you, I live. To worship you, I live, I live to worship you. That's what drove them to turn forest into campgrounds. Oh, 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 oh. Hey, oh, oh, oh. Sila parush kalada diada. not seeking the face of God that made men like Apostle Babalola to pray and they had encounters, they prayed and water came out of the rock that we still consume today. It was not an ambition. It was something that, it was a product of hunger. Don't downplay the miracles that can come out of a place of intimacy. If the intimacy between wife can produce another life, what can the intimacy between you and God produce? I'm not talking of two people who are born again. A man and his wife who are not born again. 
and simply because they paid the price of intimacy a life can come out of it not just joy not just a relationship you claim you are his bride first show me your pregnancy the proof of the intimacy and show me the children that have come as proof that you are a faithful bride was it not the rebellion of Vashti that drove her away from becoming queen Esther knew this that I'm only queen because I married the king my focus is not the palace I have an agenda her man wants to destroy the people but it does not start by advocating an agenda it is all about the king first that was a strategy the book of Esther is a prophetic book a woman was used by God her man wanted to annihilate the Jews the spirit of the Antichrist was at work in him and for Esther to do that if she had God because you see a man had built a relationship with Ahasuerus that would not be easily destroyed not even because of a woman she had to use her worship and her relationship to win the heart of Ahasuerus I show you the protocol of intimacy it starts with him not it King Ahasuerus she came to him he lifted up the golden censer what do you want he said I want to do something that flaunts your glory I want to set up a party for you wow this is what I wanted Vashti to do she built a camp for herself and for God she was only queen because she married the king I bring you a prophetic word of caution Oh, body of Christ let us be careful lest we make the mistake of Vashti for the things that are written aforetime the Bible says they are for our learning so that we through the comfort of scripture might find hope that hope that does not make ashamed Vashti began to run her own program when the king sent for her she forgot that she was in the palace only because of him so when Esther came she came not forgetting where she was coming from her goal was to save the Jews but it started with the king don't forget her goal was to save the Jews but it started with the king she organized the feast the king was so happy he said do it again until it got to a feast that the Bible calls the feast of wines there is something about wine <laughs> That's not where I'm going to this night, but I have done a teaching on it already. And she came to the king and spoke about Haman. And the king went to his garden to think the relationship I have built with Haman, would I let it just get destroyed? And he came out and saw Haman begging her and thought he wanted to rape his wife. He said, that's it. I found what I'm looking for. Do you know how many things, many requests that we pray for were supposed to be answered through the mystery of intimacy? That if we spent time with God, we would not have to pray those things. I assure you. Most of our fathers who had them did not even know they needed them. They just knew they needed God. They didn't know they needed the grace for prophecy, the grace for visions. All they wanted was God. Even when they were wrong, let me be wrong in his presence. Samuel slept but he slept close to the ark it's safer to sleep even if you will sleep sleep near the ark you know sometimes when you are attending videos people are sleeping and sometimes when you are tired of waking them up you find consolation that they are sleeping close to the ark it's safer and better <laughs> are we blessed let's rush you won't believe that oh dear Number two, the spirit of Elijah. The spirit of prayer and supplication. Now, watch this. The Bible tells us that it was at a time when the prophets of Baal seemed to be reigning over the territory and the prophets of God had to go in hiding. Why? Because of a spiritual system that was antagonistic to God's program captured in a woman called Jezebel. 
Are we together now? That Jezebel was an extension of a spiritual system that is Antichrist. It's carried many names. Babylon, Jezebel. Now, Jezebel is a spirit that cannot be activated until she's connected to government. Because the character of the spirit of the Antichrist is that it wants government, the place of influence and authority. So now Jezebel is married to Ahab. Are we together now? And the prophets of Baal are excelling under her leadership. Suddenly this man shows up. This spiritual system called Elijah the Tishbite. And the Bible tells us that Elijah is not just a person. Elijah is a spiritual system that foreruns the move of God. Every time God is about to show up in a territory, Elijah must precede him. Elijah is a prophetic and apostolic system that is mandated with several assignments. Number one, to restore the patterns and the ordinances of God. Every time there is decadence within a territory, the spirit of Elijah is required within that territory. Mandated with the assignment to call men back through genuine repentance to rebuild the altars of God again. Are we together? Before the great and the terrible day of the Lord, Malachi said that Elijah will come again. When Jesus was about to show up, Elijah came again in the person, the spirit and the power of Elijah, John. John the prophet, who we call the Baptist. I think I shared it on this platform if I remember. That John was not a Baptist. John was a prophet. In fact, he was a witness through prophecy. Are we together? Baptism was a strategy to help him identify the Christ. So every, a formula was given to him during his time of training. That every time you dip them in water, keep looking up. When you dip, you look up and say, be on your way. These, these wicked guys came to distract him. Because the spirit of the Antichrist kept searching for that seed that will bruise the head of the serpent. And they suspected, it tells you Satan is not as accurate as we have give, we've given him a lot of credit. Moses grew up in the same palace at the center of wizardry and yet the eye of witchcraft could not see him. Are we together? So he kept baptizing and then he saw this young man, 30 years old. For 18 years thereabout he had disappeared. We don't know what happened. From age 12, the Bible is silent about him. The next time we see him, he's 30 years old coming to be baptized and John said behold the lamb that takes away the sins of the world he says I'm not worthy to untouch to untie even the latchet of your shoe and Jesus said suffer it to be so now we're dealing with patterns now suffer it to be so that scripture will be fulfilled when he dipped John in water John came out and your Bible says and the heavens opened they saw the Holy Spirit coming in the similitude of a dove and the Father now spoke. This is my beloved Son, whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. Jesus then began his ministry. John got it right. But I wish we had time. We would have learned a lesson from the latter years of John. It was John who ordained Jesus to ministry. But you see, the pain of giving all to God, if you don't die completely, the remaining part of you that is alive will destroy the remaining part of you. See, there were times when God would tell them, destroy everything in a land, kill there is, whatever you leave else, it will still grow. John said, I must decrease. It was not enough to decrease. The assignment was to die. John decreased, but there was still something in him that was alive. And that something began to grow. And he said, go and tell Jesus, are you the Messiah? John, what suddenly happened to you? Did you forget the memory of your ordination? This is just about three years. John, who ordained Jesus to ministry, now became offended. Listen, it is wonderful to decrease, but the assignment is death. It's risky to decrease alone. Because things will happen that will resurrect things that have been dead or that were there but did not die. Are we together now? Yes. He was angry and he sent his disciples. How come Jesus is not even concerned? I'm in prison here. And the disciples came to Jesus. And Jesus began to heal. He blessed people, healed. And he said, go and tell John what you have seen. 
He said, happy is he who is not offended in me. John, I know the problem. You are not acting out of ignorance. There is something you are saying. You send those messengers with something else. I get the message. Lord, I served you for 30 years and I do not even have a branch to myself. Make sure you die. Don't just decrease. Are we together? Are we learning something already? Yes. The spirit of Elijah. Now listen. Let me talk a bit on prayer. The spirit of Elijah is also the spirit of prayer and supplication. Not just the spirit, the prophetic spirit that foreruns revival. All through scripture, the price for the move of God has been prayer with fasting. That's why I, I recommended some of this. Not prayer alone. There is something we have done to the fasting part. But it has always been prayer and fasting. The Bible says, if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face, turning from their wicked ways. It says, I will hear from heaven, I will forgive their sins, and I will heal their land. Are we together now? James chapter 5, when we read from verse 13, the Bible says, if any man is any man afflicted, Apostle James is teaching now, he says, let him pray. Is that true? And then when you go down from verse 16, down, the Bible began to talk about the confessing your faults to one another, pray for one another that you may be healed. Then it says the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. That means it can accomplish much in the spirit. Next verse. Elijah, now the Bible is using a personality to show you the power and the excellency of prayer. That Elijah was a, a man subject to like passion as we are. And he prayed earnestly that it might not rain over a period of three years and six months. Next verse. The Bible says, and he prayed again. So when the Bible says that you shall bind and lose, he's showing you how it happens. It's not just by saying be bound or be loose. Uh -uh. That we bind and we lose. We allow and we disallow in the place of prayer. All through scripture and all through Bible history, it's been a people who set themselves to pray. Ranatha, come. The spirit and the bride telling the word to come. Show up, oh God, let us see your power and your glory again and again. We need the Lord to raise up prophetic intercessors again. People who are not just concerned about tea and bread and what they desire. Men and women like Anna the prophetess, whose assignment is to pray until they see the consolation of Israel. Anna the prophetess prayed Jesus from the realm of the spirit till he manifested in the physical realm. Are we together? Yes. Study all the revivals that have happened in this nation. They came on the wings of prayer and fasting. Men and women who prayed, Lord show up, come visit your people, manifest your power, let us see your glory again. I assure you that once again we will witness the move of God in a spectacular dimension. There's gonna be a great awakening. There's gonna be a great revival in our land. There's gonna be a great awakening. And everyone who calls on Jesus, they will be saved. The spirit of Elijah restores the patterns. It's a prophetic and apostolic system that foreruns the move of God. That's why I told you Enoch and Elijah are two spiritual systems that if not allowed to find expression within a territory, there cannot be a move of God. The call to intimacy and the call to genuine prayer. Are we blessed? What happens when people pray? There is an outpouring of the Spirit. Joel chapter 2. And in the last days I shall pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Lord, pour out 
your spirit on all the nations of the earth let your sons and daughters speak your words of prophecy send us dreams and visions reveal the secrets of your heart Lord our faith is rising let creation see the coming of your name there's gonna be a great awakening oh this will happen there's gonna be a great revival in our land there's gonna be a great awakening and everyone who calls on jesus Is secure for apostasy and the deviation. Are we together now? When people contend for intimacy and the patterns of God are restored through prayer and fasting, the response from heaven, number one, is an outpouring of the spirit of revelation. The body of truth allocated for the manifestation of power, grace, and the possibility of the kingdom first Peter chapter 2 and verse 9 calls it marvelous light marvelous light the spirit of revelation coming corporately not just upon individuals but corporately upon the body of Christ within a sphere and within a territory Ephesians chapter 3, when you read from verse 9 down to 21, Paul was talking about the spirit of revelation, the grace that can make all men see. Revelation is important because it will help us through the revelation of the word. We will be able to discern error. We will be able to discern apostasy, a deviation from the known patterns of God. And then there will be an outpouring of greater levels of the anointing. Now, this is very powerful. Please listen. So, this is what I'm teaching. That for you to experience the move of God in any territory, number one, Enoch. A call to intimacy. A call to hunger and the pursuit of God. Number two, Elijah. The spirit and supplication. Are we together now? That calls men back through prayer to authorize heaven. Because the heaven of heaven belongs to the Lord. But the earth has he given to the sons of men. It will take men calling upon the name of the Lord from the earth. And when that happens, there is an outpouring. The response from heaven is number one, the outpouring of the spirit of revelation. This is what is beginning to happen. So you see that there are teaching priests arising. Are we together? It's a response to that prayer. Let me tell you this. Whether or not, you know, I met a woman, I think it was in Enugu or so. I met this great woman, very humble woman. Just, just, just let me know what happens to people when they are truly yielded. I met this woman after a conference and then she began to tell me about the marvelous work, Pastor Daly my goodness and my god i was almost going on my knees and say madam pray for me or you came for counseling but i think i'm the one who needs the counseling 
She just came to receive an impartation and to receive prayer. And when she was done telling me she has a camp, a prayer camp, and the kind of intercession and prayer for nations. Many of the people you see standing strong today, they may not know the altars that support them. But there are people who have been burdened to ensure that they stand. And some of these people are nameless, faceless people. You may not see some of them on TV. They are not the Joshua Selmans. And so we are beguiled to think that those that will know a bit are the ones that are doing much. The day we stand before God, we'll be surprised. Because before we stand on the queue of honor and reward, we'll be surprised at how backward some of us will be. There are certain people you will see an old mama that did not do much, but that woman spent her life making sure we stand. These are the people who will receive honor that is befitting their sacrifice. You will never receive a crown for what you didn't labor for. No. There are seven crowns according to scripture. The reward of the saints. Are we blessed? The spirit of of revelation and then the outpouring of greater levels of the anointing listen to me the anointing is very powerful why because it is God's empowerment to produce his dimension of possibilities I came in when the dear pastor this this precious woman of God was sharing I was so edified by what she was communicating there is a real warfare the Bible does not leave us in the dark as to the fact that this domain is already saturated with wicked spirits a legion a legion had no place to stay they had to make do with one man we are only about 8 million people on earth and these spirits were the bible says to the point that when they leave men they still try to come back to find out there is a real accommodation problem with these spirits they are searching for bodies now it's a very serious thing and these spirits are not they, they can coexist in a person there is a real warfare at a national level, at an international level, at a community level. Paul gave us the organogram of the dark world. They are not careless. They are just, not just random spirits moving everywhere. They have their jurisdiction of function. There are spirits over churches, wicked spirits to attack the work of God. There are spirits over cities. There are spirits over communities. There are spirits over nations. There are spirits over territories. And those spirits, they multiply their wickedness based on your growth in the spirit and the kind of grace that is coming on your life. It is true. That's why there are people that until God sees their build up and their stamina, he cannot answer their prayer for more anointing. Every mantle that follows you, you must find out the attack that followed that mantle. If you want to be Elijah, know that you must prepare on how to deal with Jezebel because Jezebel follows Elijah. We pray for anointings and we pray for mantles, yet we do not study that those who carried it before us where, what were the systems because the methodology of the devil does not change it's a strategy that can be known from scripture if you are Samson you must create a system of protecting your hair are we together if you are Daniel you must sustain the ability to use the spirit of excellence to dumbfound the princes of Babylon so that you will be exalted and you will be made to last through the dispensation of three kings Study the grace you are carrying and study not just its system of operation but how the devil responds to those anointings. The response of darkness will change when you become anointed. So you receive a grace and God promotes you, multiplies you, gives you a higher apostolic and prophetic order of grace. The attacks will re-strategize themselves to suit that anointing. It is the reason why many times the Bible says, uh, well, not just because of that, but I think that, um, I think it was Pastor Poju that said something here. We have to be careful with premature exposure. Just because people are yielded and they love us very much, we should not out of pity just come and say, look, I think that sometimes we are harming them. They do not have the stamina and the spiritual intelligence to manage the challenges that come with that level of grace. 
we must sustain a non-emotional approach in lifting people in ministry. Because sometimes you can feel, ah, this person has been too kind. You, you love me too much. And when God is dealing with them, we don't allow the training to be complete. Remember what I said about emotions yesterday. Emotions are wonderful, but they have proven to be a serious interruption to God's program. The outpouring of the Spirit. What will be the result? Isaiah 35, from verse 1 to 5. Goodness, find somewhere to pray. Hmm. The wilderness and the solitary place shall be glad for them. And the desert shall rejoice and blossom as the rose. It shall blossom abundantly and rejoice even with joy and singing. The glory of Lebanon shall be given unto it the excellency of Carmel and Sharon. They shall see the glory of the Lord and the excellency of our God. Verse 3. It says, Strengthen ye the weak hands and confirm the feeble knees. 4. Say unto them that are of a fearful heart, Be strong, fear not. Behold, your God will come with vengeance, even God with a recompense. He will come and save you. Verse 5. It says, Then the eyes of the blind shall be open, and the ears of the deaf shall be unstopped. When you read it, you see all of the manifestations that begin to happen. The coming move of God, according to Scripture, and according to, like Pastor Dele would say, reference from patriarchs. Men and women who we have followed passionately and we have vetted their integrity. We are sure that these people know God and walk with Him. I've had the privilege by the grace of God to meet a few people in their lifetime before they went to be with the Lord. Men and women who were at the epicenter of God's program. Others who knew others who were at the epicenter of God's program. And I wanted to hear what they had to say about the coming move of God. Because almost every one of them died and said, I still see something coming. That even though we had done well, this is not it. The character of the move of God that is coming, it will not be like the former revivals necessarily. Now, there are two dimensions of God's move. There is what we call the cyclical move of God. Are we together now? The cyclical move of God, meaning that as it was in the past, exactly so, you can study it. This is one of the blessings of mentorship. The eyes of experience can see and say, I know this. I can, you can be guided. But there are certain moves of God that are new. The pattern may not be a pattern that has happened in time past. I perceive that the move that is coming is like that. For the Bible says, blow the trumpet in Zion. It says, sound the alarm upon my holy mountain. When it begins to talk about the formation of this army, it's the Lord himself that is leading them in front. Because the nature of that move, no human being can use his experience to guide that move accurately. It has to be the Lord himself. Hallelujah. Yeah. It is not just a move that is spiritual in context. It is a move that is also economic in context. It is a move that has to do with, according to prophet Micah, Zechariah, they, they talk about the mountain of the Lord's house being exalted above other mountains and that all nations will flow to it. They will say to one another, come, let us go to the mount of the Lord are we together now? Yes. He says he will teach us his ways. So it's not going to be like other times because we have a lot of things in our civilization right now that makes that move complex. One of it is the power of the media. One of it is a greater level of sociological enlightenment. We have a judicial system that can protect and can fight the purposes of God. So the strategy, the blueprint... Is, is a technology that God must import and give us by his wisdom. But we know one thing for sure, and maybe this is what I'll use to wrap up. That the global harvest, as far as the program of God is concerned, the global harvest is a reality. Matthew chapter 24, when you read the first 14 verses, 
the Bible begins to talk about what we call the signs of the end times. I don't want to go into that because of my time. The Bible talks about nations rising against nations. Are we together? Kingdom against kingdom, etc., etc. Let's go to verse 14. And then the Bible says that all of these things are just the birth pains. 14. 24 and verse 14. Read with me, please. It's projected. Ready? One to read. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness. Stop. Stop. Please keep that scripture. Notice he never said the gospel shall be preached in all the earth. There is a difference between the earth and the world. Are we together now? Yes. The root word that is used there is still the word that is later interpreted nations. Not just countries, systems, structures. What we have come to know in the body of Christ as the seven mountains. That this gospel must be taken strategically, not just from country to country. The media has made it possible that from one point, you can talk to the whole world. So he's not just talking about physically traveling alone. Uh -uh. That we must through our alignment with the spirit, we must import a technology that grants us the authority to take this gospel across these seven mountains. Are we together now? Yes. The concept of the seven mountains, it was not just an invention of men. These are the mind control systems. Whoever sits upon that sphere of influence controls a section of God's activity. Remember Psalm 24? The earth, its fullness, the mind control systems, and the inhabitants. This is what Satan is fighting. And all of these seven mountains thrive on this. The earth, the fullness, the mind control system. Right now, there are certain nations where you cannot take this teaching. Right now, no. It will not be allowed. Not mainstream media. And even their social media platforms have been so censored. Are we together now? How many social media platforms have had to pull down certain teachings? Even in recent times, they've had to doctor and manage their terms and, and, and so on and so forth. These are all subtle strategies ultimately leading to the shutting of the voice. Remember what they told the apostles, do not preach in that name and that doctrine again. So there must be men and women coming in the spirit and the power of Daniel and Joseph who God will grant access to the seat of governance. There will have to be people, every arm robber comes from a family. Every thief and troublemaker that is disturbing society comes from a family somewhere. There has to be men and women that God will raise to help us protect the sanctity of the family front. So that our children will not define adults as anything. It's still male and female. But now you ask children, you know what I'm talking about. There are all kinds of devilish inventions and they are indoctrinating our children. Then we have the mountain of education, like Pastor Dele was talking about. Men and women, this is a major mind control system. Are you aware how many years an individual spends to be educated in as much as we know secular education? Imagine investing that amount of time and your life under the mentorship of someone, a curriculum you were not part of those who designed. There has to be men and women who advocate the purposes of God. And on legal access, get to that mountain. Imagine that our vice chancellors are filled with the Holy Spirit. Prophetic and discerning and accurate. My question is, what stops that agenda? We have to be intentional. Saying one day God will do it is not so. There has to be a like an architecture designed with intelligence. Terrorists did not just start killing people. They planned it. They gave themselves a maybe a 20-year Oh, you, you will need to go to school for this. We will need a doctor who can inject people. So because of that, you are going to study medicine. It's not about passion. That's what what you are going to do so that this role will be achieved and so while they were in class with their colleagues the rest thought they had a classmate but his his attention was unusual not just because he wanted to get an md or mbbs 
he knew that he needed an authorization to enter that system right now there is no there is no part of the seven mountains where people the mountain of economy the king of Tyre sits there himself but there's an army rising up there's an army rising up there's an army rising up they will break every chain break every chain can I tell you this there is nowhere in scripture where Satan ever took God unawares the intelligence the all-seeing eye the light he shrouds himself with light as a mystery he does not wait for time to reveal events he is called Alpha Omega there is no end in between and so according to his predeterminate counsel he's already created a formation to manage this pride of Babylon there is an emergence of men and women not just men in pulpit ministry please hear me this must become our advocacy to train only men of God is a dangerous campaign we more that they all come and pray and fast together but once we are done training them in church we must diverge them to the geography of their assignments where a businessman is fasting the same way a pastor is fasting and you are saying why go through that burden I thought it's just an intellectual adventure you said don't be carried away by my suit and tie there is an apostle behind that suit and tie sent to the marketplace you know one of the mistakes that we make and men of God we must take we must take responsibility for that mistake is that in a bid to keep the sense of spirituality we have downplayed every other mountain that is not the mountain of religion so we tell people don't worry all you have to do is focus be a man of God so when people begin to find unusual desire for the things of God and they find out that why is education pulling me like this they become guilty for wanting an area that is not ministry they don't know what to do with their passion and their hunger whereas there is a, the Lord of Harvest the Holy Ghost, he people to the geography of their impact. Let me tell you this I said it the last time I was here. If God is calling you to be a prophet or an apostle, the character and the nature of your training will never be the same as someone who is going to become a politician. Are we together? After you pray five, six hours, you may be tired. But the guy who is called into the prophetic can receive a vision to continue and turn that prayer into three days. You do not use the template of your training to bully or demean another. It is a, it is a training that is earmarked. You will find out that that educationist can sit down for three days and not come out. And all he's doing is studying. We must sustain this discernment. Because whilst we have our members, not all of them will become men of God like we call it. Not all of them will become lecturers. Not all of them will become business people. We must sustain the intelligence to discern the geography of their assignment and to help them like Eli helped Samuel. It is one of the greatest balance we can bring to what is going on right now in the body of Christ. There are many people on the pulpit today who have no business with the pulpit. The nature of their call they are so ineffective and they are wondering. It's not backsliding. The more they know God, the more they fail in pulpit ministry because their knowledge of God is pushing them closer to their assignment. I hear the chains falling. Hey, I hear the chains falling. Listen. Listen to me. In 2005, I had a vision. And in that vision, the Lord began to show me the coming move. 
and this is what I saw and it's consistent with scripture I saw people in Asia like young people and I saw fire just dropping on one then spreading to another then spreading to another then spreading to another in another vision I saw Europe like the map of Europe and it looked like a rotting fruit a fruit that was becoming rotting and all of a sudden at the speed of light there were people who were largely black skinned just came there and they were doing something to the fruit it was strange but it was like how do I put it now they were adding something to that fruit that was stopping it from rotting even the ones that were already rotting I knew that this was the move of God you see these missionaries from Europe and the US they brought the gospel that gospel was a seed the parable of the talents he gave unto one five talents he gave unto one he should not remain like that that rejected stone for many years in the midst of our governmental failure and all that has been going on there has still been a making and now there is the harvest we are taking it back to these regions but we are not giving them the way they brought it to us for it will be an error to give them the same thing they gave us most of them did not understand the gospel of the kingdom they only understood the gospel of salvation that reveals the love of the father in and through the substitutionary sacrifice of Christ but now we are taking by the grace of God the whole counsel of God through the election of grace these people from a land whose rivers divide weak in themselves Pastor Dele, God is going to start sending many people from this nation. Believe me, across Europe, across Asia, across... Don't be surprised if it's you. You keep planning before his voice comes, but I assure you, there will be a lot of interruption of men's programs. And for some of you, you will doubt it because it was not in what he told you yesterday. Remember, I told you that there are many levels of God's will. There is his predeterminate counsel, but there are people who have failed God in those regions. He, will, he, he needs a testament for his name. So God will have to bring certain people and say, you know what, let me add to your assignment. It was not in the original blueprint. I'm speaking to you prophetically. God is going to be raising people by the Spirit. They did not have the desire to have maybe branches and so on and so forth. But God will start moving them again. Go to these regions. Take the harvest. It's a seed of gratitude to them. Listen. There were many things they didn't know. But some of them left their comfort for life. They waved their wives and their children goodbye and they never saw their dead bodies. They came to Africa and brought the gospel. Now that God has walked in us, oh rejected stone, hear me. Rejoice not over me, he said. For while they were laughing at us, while they were mocking us and saying Africa will not rise, the spirit of God was doing something. And now God is empowering us with the whole counsel of God. And he's sending us with a grace and an anointing. All of the spiritual equippings. We are going to reintroduce intimacy. We are going to reintroduce. Right now, listen to me. I say this respectfully. I know that there are people following from the West and all across the world. I say it with every sense of passion. But there are certain dimensions that have been lost in the West and in Europe. For those of us who frequent these regions, I'm sure when you step the shores, you say, no, this, this cannot be where Smith Wigglesworth came from. This cannot be where the revival, the Azusa Street, you visit some of those places and they are almost like monuments. Hmm. It is for this reason God put this summit. There is a trumpet that is about to sound. Not the coming of Christ, the move of God. And it's a clarion call. For some of you, visions that you saw decades, you ran away and got a job. No problem. God allowed you so that you don't think he's unjust. But I assure you that vision is still lingering around your head. And even if it's after 20 years, one day you will have to come back and answer that call again. This kingdom come project, as I call it, will require finances. 
is the reason why God is raising apostles and prophets in the marketplace. So that our advocacy is not the marketing of flesh. To buy cars, to buy houses, thank God for those things, but they are very mundane if they do not have kingdom come. There are people that God is raising. Oh, we are getting back. Kenneth, Kenneth Copeland prophesied one time during the pastors and uh, the ministers conference at Canaan land. He said he saw the revival, the tent meeting, the grace that was upon the tent meetings coming back again. I know it is true. Nigeria today, we don't do so many crusades again for very obvious reasons because of the security situation. Do you see that it's not just about security? It's an attack. The same way a parliament came and stopped prayer, it was not just, it was targeting just one man. Social media that should be a platform for advocating the purposes of God, the devil is now using it to make people fight themselves across the body. A platform that should, should shout Jesus with one click. Imagine the miracle of the media, Pastor Dele. I am standing here ministering and nations across the world, people in their cars, their homes, their laptops, their gadgets are listening and the same power, the same presence. We waste an opportunity to reveal Jesus. We waste an opportunity to glorify him. But by the grace of God and by the authority of scripture, there is a move of God that is coming. Please hear me. Don't give up on your little prayer groups. Do you know why God began to bring non-denominational platforms? Because he knew it would be difficult to break the barrier of denominations denominations have a construct that even though the people there have observed the challenge the system is so grounded and it's been honored for a long time it will be difficult for him to penetrate so god came up with a strategy and the strategy is to float non-denominational platforms so that what you would easily not receive in your local platform i'm speaking apostolically now you can have the chance to now come to a non-denominational platform many people would never be filled with the holy ghost just remain Meaning in an orthodox circle. So God allowed them to come to a non-denominational platform. Whether it was a campus fellowship or some kind of meeting somewhere. And they stepped into it and had an encounter. Today there are Catholics that are filled with the Holy Ghost. There are Anglican priests that are on fire with accuracy and balance. And the thing is that God didn't allow them to leave those platforms. He still kept them there. Because sometimes the place of your pain is also the place of your assignment. Oh Moses, you only leave Egypt for a while. You will still go back there. That is still the place of your assignment. This must happen before his majesty returns. The advocacy that he will return just any time is wonderful and is spiritual. But let me tell you sincerely, it will not happen that way. Do you know, I'm glad that your pastor is doing his, his, his PhD thesis and we had a brief but wonderful moment. His intelligence is very stunning. Are you aware that there are about a little over, I think he's almost getting to 8 billion people now. Find out how many of them have had the gospel. Not how many of them bear Christian names have had the gospel constructively presented. There are lands in this world, this frame of earth that we live in, who have not had the gospel. I assure you. All of this is to one end. The global harvest. The move of God is not some advocacy. You see why God, there will, the move of God will not be credited to any one person. This is a strange thing. It's usually the, the, the way it had been that one person will forerun that move. Can I tell you something? I, oh dear, do I say this? You see what happened with answers? Is a prophetic adumbration of something happening in the realm of the spirit. How could a move be so powerful without faces? This is how the move of God is coming. You will just see an inferno of light and power sweeping across education and it cannot be credited to a particular individual. This honor, no man will take it to himself. 
the Lord of the harvest coordinating the systems. So for some of you, the prayer groups, 30 people, 40 people, you think you are not doing much, but it's a contribution to that kingdom come agenda. There is a prophet, there is an apostle that you are raising. Just because you may not see it, it doesn't look like it, does not mean it is not it. There are mothers today who gave birth to one or two children and stopped giving birth. God forced them. The woman planned not to get pregnant. She still got pregnant. You know why? Because the third child has a role to play. And so, <laughs> You don't know the desperation in the heart of God to see his purposes come to pass. He will shift and change structures. Woe betides any man who fights this global move. He will meet the vicious, the hand of God directly. For this is a move that cannot be fought. I assure you, you may fight a church. You may fight an individual, but you can't fight his program. Because his jealousy is back of his program. Therefore, as I seek to round up, we are going to pray. Goodness, our time is gone. Forgive me, Pastor Dele. But listen to me. There are two prayer points that I want to bring. Number one is, Father, what is my role in your program? Redirect me and cause me to be effective. What is my role and what will it require? For some of you, your role will require training because you will be standing among kings. For some of you, your role will require you to be sound in business because of that which you have to do. For some of you, your role will require you to contend for higher levels of anointing because of the mighty things that God will do with you. Lift your voice and pray in one minute. All those following, please make sure you are praying. Father, we pray for the global harvest. Let the seven mountains be filled with men and women who have been walked upon. Men of intimacy and power. Men of prayer. Men who have understood the patterns of God. Men filled with knowledge and revelation. Men full of the Spirit. Guided by His grace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Last prayer point. I'd like us to pray that the grace and the unction reserved for this season, that let the windows of heaven be opened and let that grace, listen to me, listen to me. We will never be able to push this final battle. Rick Joyner wrote it in his book. You read his book, The Final Quest, The Call. Are we together now? He saw this prophetically and he began to warn the body of Christ. No matter what dimension, what part of the seven mountains you will occupy, there is a real contention against gates and forces and many of them are ancient. We will need a renewed baptism of genuine spiritual power. I thought I would have the time to talk about the spirit of power. He is not only the Lord of the harvest. Micah chapter 3 and verse 8. I have power by the Spirit. There is a dimension of spiritual power. Say unto God, how terrible art thou in your ways. It says, through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves to you. There are forces that will leave no stone unturned to see that they wreck our lives, our churches, the gates of hell, there is such a coordinated system of onslaught from darkness and we will need the power of the Holy Ghost. We will need genuine unction. More than just the grace to prophesy and call names. More than just the grace for people to fall down and stand up. We need territorial anointings. Graces that you stand from one region and utter a word and the spirit of grace will take that word across regions. Are you ready to pray? Father, for your glory and for your kingdom, let the unction assigned for this move, let it come upon my life. Lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and pray. 
she prato sege bala hashanda la katos lekete prende gede baroto soto brakata shale sabranda dosele pasku brahaske de bahashia the grace you are in ministry cry for the grace for signs wonders the grace for accurate exegesis of scripture you are in business pray for the grace that distinguishes you you are in politics the grace that grants you access above the powers that be the systems and the structures Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him, that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ, and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then, don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here. Don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing, keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus. I'll see you again. Bye.